2012's Dear Esther, or more specifically the 2017 Landmark Edition video game review. I love this video game. The, uh, let's see, I, uh, yeah, anything critical I say in this video is not based on bitterness or anything like that. The, um, uh, yeah, when I when I got this, it was free. It no longer is free on Steam, but yeah, um, you know, at most it would be like time that I felt was was wasted, and that's not how I feel. The um, uh, let's see, yeah, um, and I will only be comparing it to the other. You know, this is a this is a walking simulator. I'm not going to be comparing it to games that have much more interaction. The Among the, the most popular tags on Steam to help give you an idea of what the game is like, in addition to Walking Simulator, it's atmospheric exploration, short, story-rich, and relaxing, oh, and casual. So, yeah, this is not one where you're, like, fighting for your life kind of thing. You know, if if your average, there's a lot of video games that are like a lot of, and I, I say this with love, kind of kind of very easy easy to digest kind of American pop culture kind of thing where there's something very clear. There's a very clear conflict, you know, and yeah, it's going to in some way satisfy the the. What, what it sets up. This is not real. This is more like a novel. You know, it's not quite a visual novel uh, subgenre that I don't think I've yet played. I have some games I will be playing, but I haven't played a visual novel yet. But what I know about them does not quite fit for, for this. But yeah, like, the, the... It's heavy on, like, pondering things and... Just like yeah, some some I hesitate to call it backstory because it's almost too vague, but yeah, you know, that's the sort of thing. You know, I think so so yeah. I think this will help give you an idea of when I look at the, the achievements on Steam, fifty one point nine percent of players completed the first chapter. And then that, you know, slowly goes, uh, let's see, I think these are in order. Yeah, so 31, 38.2% finish the next one, 35.2, the one after that, 32.5, the one after that. So even, you know, Im immediately, there's a drop off of 48.1% of players who didn't even want to finish the entire the, the first chapter which is not long you know and yeah it steadily declines so this is very much you know a lot of people who sat down to start well, start playing this did not play it for terribly long and even players who did get through at least some of it didn't go on to to complete it you know and that's it's it's very much a game it's it's very much a case of you have to really want to play it it's not the kind of thing where you start playing it and you know it's, it's okay but ah uh, that's it's kind of it's kind of challenging you got to you got to see if you can beat the challenge there's not a lot of challenge here and it's not there's not meant to be you know, I've, I've read a couple of reviews, both people who love it and people who hate it acknowledge this is essentially more a piece of interactive art than it is a video game. And I think if you go into it knowing that, and if you, if, yeah, if it's the kind of thing you want, you know, the, yeah, on, on Steam, on the store page for Steam, there's a number of, like, uh, uh, screenshots and the and a, and a trailer and they give you a pretty good idea of what 
it's like, especially, yeah, the, the trailer is this, you know, it's fairly, it's fairly slow paced, you know, compared to, again, you know, like, more fast paced games and such. And, yeah, so this is one where it's, there's, uh, there's only so much you can say about the plot. You start the game on the shore of a beach. There's a small cabin close by, and, you know, the, the, this island has, like, caves, and, you know, the, the, there are some places where you can walk in where clearly others have, like, there's maybe some light fencing that's been put up, and that's basically the only context that we have at the very start of the game. And over the course of the game, we do get a, a little more, but it is very vague. Like, there are, if, if you Google for, like, you know, what does it mean, there are several major, like, interpretations that rule each other out. And, and really, even after you've played the entire thing, you know, I, I don't know if all of them are equally, have, have equal merit, but I'm not sure I really saw anything in the game where I was like, okay, this explanation of it makes no sense. You know, it is very much left up to interpretation, and yeah, the, you know, this is either going to intrigue you or frustrate the, yeah. And... You almost immediately know if this is the kind of thing you want to continue down. I actually don't know. Let's see. Is there a demo? If I... Let's see. I would... Okay, Steam doesn't appear to have a demo. But certainly this is a game where if you're not sure you could also you could you could watch like the first chunk of like yeah yeah someone playing through the game you'll get an idea of if it's your kind of thing or not and you know and and it's not like they they kept that fact hidden when you read about the game it's often vague when it comes to plot and context every so often there will be poetic voiceover that helps fill in who you are and what's going on, you know, often very vague. I get why some people don't like walking simulators. I I think this is the first one I've played. It's not going to be the last, but it's not my, like, preferred genre. I love when you can really interact. Like, most of the games that I love you're running around, there's something trying to kill you or catch you, and you're, you know, maybe you're supposed to sneak past it, maybe you're supposed to fight it, you know, but this is not the kind of game I, I usually play. Now, at the, yeah, at the risk of stating the obvious, if you don't like walking simulators, obviously don't play a walking simulator and then just, you know, give it a negative review, you know. It was never, if it was never going to be for you, it definitely does make sense to criticize something for turning out to be a walking simulator if you were promised something that had features that it doesn't. And yeah, based on playing this, I do understand why some people felt like it made sense to bring the, the developers of this, the, the Chinese room, into Amnesia 2, uh, Machine for Pigs. I also see why others did not... Um, you know, the, yeah, the big thing that makes sense for, for bringing them into Amnesia is the, the atmosphere, because they, re they really do a great job on that. The, one of the big things for, for Not, and where I also think that game definitely could have been better, they, this does not have puzzles, and that is something you can say. I, I do love A Machine for Pigs. I, I think there's a lot great about it. And the stuff that especially works in that is the the plot and the the atmosphere, you know, more than anything else. And yeah, you know, this game 100%. I've, I've seen some people say, oh, this is basically a walking simulator where they're being like, they're basically exaggerating. This game is a walking simulator. The only thing you can do is walk 
strafe and move the camera in first person perspective. You cannot run, jump, physically interact with anything. Like, you know, the closest you get is you can walk on or near things, you know. And there were definitely times where I found myself wishing that I could at least speed the character up, if even only slightly, not enough to ruin the mood, you know, but there's, especially when you, when you walk a little bit and you realize, oh, this is a dead end, when you're backtracking, I would really love for the game to allow you to move at least a little bit faster and then slow back down to the walk as soon as you reach a new area. But I, I understand why they made the, the decision. Uh, there are a couple of context-sensitive automatic things. If you're in a dark area, a flashlight will come on, which will go back off when you leave it. Uh, you know, the, there are... There was one point where, like, a seagull flew overhead and... Um, I don't remember what the word is for... It, it made the noise that seagulls make, you know, and I guess, I guess it spooked the player character because he, like, ducked to, to, you know, which lasted, you know, second or two, so, you know, significantly shorter than, like, there is a lot to love about Amnesia the Dark Descent, but on replay, boy, does the first chunk really feel like it takes forever, like, as soon as you've been introduced to the game once, I feel like I would, I would really love for them to let you just quickly move through the first part. You know, just, I think it's maybe the first 10, 15 minutes or so of, of that. Or maybe it just felt like that. But yeah, the, the you know, if you if you badly want to know, you know, there are walkthroughs of that game. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's, there's a, a couple of times where the only way to get in an, you know, of an area, you'd have to, you'd have to duck. And the character is going to do that automatically and, and go back to, you know, straighten back out as soon as he can. I understand why some people feel that this makes it less scary, like there will obviously never be a time where this game forces you to run away from an enemy, much less you have to fight it in a challenging way. However, it does mean that you can focus entirely on the story and atmosphere, and you know, again, hopefully nobody is forcing you to play walking simulators if you really don't want to. It is, you know, this is very much a case where this game would have been torn to shreds, you know, if the the atmosphere was not so good. And, you know, I've played games where you're forced to walk slowly, and it's just annoying. Like, it's it's uh, it's been many many years, but I did play Septera Core Legacy of the Creator, I believe is the full title. I played through it several times. I tried playing again, you know, years ago, and I had completely forgotten how freaking slow the main character moves, you know. And in that game, I, I would have to guess, I think it's because that was the best they could do for the... Because I don't... I wouldn't say that it really... Like, you know, yeah, it also means there are some enemies that you can, you know, you can maybe see them walking up ahead, and you can't quite run fast enough to, to get past them without getting close to them. But if you sped up those characters, you could also speed up the, the player character, you know. As it is, it's just annoying, because the graphics aren't quite good enough. You know, I love that game. You know, I've, I wouldn't have spent so many hours playing Subterra Core if I didn't love it. But the graphics are not quite good enough to sustain you walking so slowly, and just too much of the game, considering that, too much of the game is walking. You know, it would also be fine if you hardly ever walked, you know, but yeah, it, it is a game where you, you are walking quite a bit. Now... Let's see, the, the, yeah, it, the, the game, Dear Esther, it is very satisfying to explore, and I do, uh, it's one of those things, I really, I completely understand why they felt, you know, again, Septera Core, 
the only explanation I have is that they were limited. They, they couldn't make her move faster, the, the protagonist player character. But with this one, it does feel like a choice. It doesn't feel like they just had no idea how to do it, though. You know, Nisha Machine for Pigs maybe feels a little like they didn't quite know how to do puzzles. But with this game, it does feel like they that was what they felt made the most sense. I think... Ah, see, I hate... I hate criticizing things where it's like, no, but they meant to, though, and there's a good reason. You know, it's not... I do think that this is the kind of thing where it would probably have a slightly broader appeal if there were at least potential puzzles. You know, things where you could choose to do a thing, but you don't have to in order to, to complete the game. But, yeah. Um, that brings us to the... Let's see. And... Yeah, so the atmosphere is one of the strongest aspects. It's very eerie, very empty. It feels largely like you're walking through a real place that is just abandoned. You know, it's not currently in use, maybe it hasn't been in use for a while. The beach is currently peaceful, but there is a sense that the weather could significantly worsen. A lot of the game you see signs of this off in the distance, the horizon, clouds gathering, and gradually... You hear the wind, and not long after, the wind is increasing in intensity. You can practically feel it on your skin. You see it moving tall blades of grass next to, you know, they, they do a really, really great job of that. Where, you know, there's there's other games where, you know, you can play, you know, this, that's another thing. This took me, a, let's see, I wrote down somewhere around here this yeah this took me an hour and ten and a half minutes to to play all the way through and I pretty much I, I walked to, to everywhere and, and tried to find everything every clue as to what's going on and such you know hypothetically you could probably shave 20 minutes off that if you're just 100 percent going for only the the stuff that yeah 10 or 20 minutes shaved off that but, but yeah, you know, there's games that are much, much longer than that, that don't have, you know, the, the, I, f I forget when they started, but some of the Grand Theft Auto games have, you know, some, like, weather, I get, well, maybe not weather, maybe more night and day kind of simulation, and, you know, I'm not really criticizing those. I think it might have been the third. Grand Theft Auto 3, I think, might have been the first one to do it. You know, or maybe it was Vice City. One of those, you know. So so it's slightly going for, you know, maybe feeling that, you know, that had nowhere near as effective atmosphere as, as here. And that's, of course, because that one isn't really going for that. And you know, there's also, you know... The, if it's Vice City, I think that's from 2002, so I'm not saying that that game should have had that. I'm saying not every game has this kind of atmosphere. And, you know, I've, I've spent far more hours of my life playing Grand Theft Auto games, and, you know, I'm not going to be playing this a million times over. That's, you know, also one of the things, given that there's so little interaction, yeah, essentially no interaction, like the... All you can do is walk, and there's this slight zoom ability, you know, but that's that's the entire thing. And it's, um, let's see, it is based on the, um, yeah, the, the Source, Source, or Unity, and or Unity engines, you know, are, are the game engines. And, yeah, you know, I've, I've played through... I have played through Amnesia Machine for Pigs several times as well, but there I especially noticed, you know, wow, these puzzles are really, really simple. Some of them are basically busy work compared to Amnesia The Dark Descent and all three Penumbra games. Like, as wild as it sounds, yeah, you know, Penumbra Requiem, like, the interaction is more engaging than Amnesia A Machine for Pigs. 
even though it's nowhere near as good as the first two Penumbra games. And yeah, so back to Dear Esther, the graphics are quite good. I'm not sure I would call them like amazing, but yeah, quite good. And the score is very haunting using piano, violin, viola, cello, some vocalizing, no real intelligible words. And yeah, I think that is all that I have to say. Just going to real quick see if there is... Right, I, th I think the, the length is good for, like, it feels like an experience. You know, it doesn't feel, you know, if this was like 10 minutes long, it you know, okay, that's not really, you know, the fact that it, you know, takes an hour or so also makes the fact that, you know, the, the way that the wind increases over the course of the game, that hits much harder than if that happened over 10-15 minutes. And, you know, it, it is definitely, like, I can understand, you know, I, I pretty much always say, you know, buy it on sale. Oh, huh. I swear I didn't plan for this. It is actually on sale right now on Steam. Um, yeah, it says offer ends 4th of January, but it's 85% off right now. And that does about... Yeah, you know, I will absolutely say the fact that there's so little... Inter that, yeah, no interaction, no real gameplay other than the walking and exploring, that does mean that you can really take in the the atmosphere and and experience it where you know there have been times where I've been playing like Silent Hill and you know the fact that I'm fighting maybe not as much the fact that I'm solving puzzles those often underline the the atmosphere but some of the the fighting you know it's like I kind of wanted to to explore some more you know and it works really well for those games, but sometimes you do want something more like this. And yeah, so I'm not sure I would really say it's particularly challenging. It is, I don't think the word is fun, but emotionally engaging. You know, actually, you know, I played this over several days, and the, the first, the, yeah, after the first day I played it, I actually had a dream that was heavily affected by this this game, you know, which like yeah, it's it's been a while since a piece of media had such a strong impact on my subconscious. So, you know, yeah, it's it's doing something right. Right. The the level design is is good. There's a lot of great environmental storytelling, you know, in addition to these like short, you know, so yeah, some of it is like actually I guess maybe all of it, it it's, a lot of the narration certainly is like these letters that as far as I can tell the player character himself wrote to the the woman named Esther and yeah, in addition to us getting some information there, it's also very clear from looking around the, the island as you explore it, you know, you yeah, you get a sense of what the game is trying to, you know, yeah, the, the themes of the game and maybe what has happened. And I think that is all that... I have so so yeah um it's definitely not for everyone you know there are games like I would say you know Grand Theft Auto San Andreas there's probably something in there for you you know basically the only people that I wouldn't at all recommend that game are people who would be you know offended by it to the point where they you know that it would like make them not want to play the game, make them un unhappy. Other than that, you know, it's 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 not going to be... Not, not everything in the game is for everyone, but there's probably something in there 
that you're going to find to be an entertaining way to spend time, and this game is, is a bit more like, yeah, it's very much what you, the, the, yeah, you have to be in the, in the right mindset for it, you know, it is very, very much an independent game, it's not trying to be the next Grand Theft Auto Max Payne or some, you know, big thing like that, but yeah, for, for those of us who are, you know, whom it appeals to, yeah, we, we really love playing it.